Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not heed them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the Good Shepherd. Ushuha la laha amina yin. Ushuha la mshiha mara. Good evening. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Gospel today, Jesus says, The enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And this is the reminder that our God is not a God of death or destruction. And this is a stumbling block for a lot of people. This is what is known as the problem of evil. Theologians and philosophers for centuries, if not millennia, have tried to deal with this problem. How can an all-loving God allow such evil in the world? How can bad things happen to good people? How can a child have cancer? I don't know the answer to that question. But I do know a few things. I know that God did not intend death to enter the world. That's not how God created the world. Genesis says that God created the world and he, cre and he created it good. There was no death, no suffering, no pain, and we chose to reject that gift by our sin. But still, how does God allow this to happen? This is because God has given us free will, right? It's our free will whether we want to sin or not. It's our free will whether we want to accept his grace or not. Because without free will, there can be no love. Love is a choice that we all have to make. And the choice to love is freely given and cannot be done without free will, without us choosing it. Because God will never force himself on us. He will never force himself on anybody. Because without freedom, we can accept or reject that love. But there is still that problem of suffering. Why do we suffer? And just a couple of things of suffering. Suffering is not bad at all times, right? Suffering that doesn't mean it's a punishment for our sins or the sins that our parents have committed. And we see this in John 9, when Jesus encounters a blind man, he heals the blind man, and people ask him, why is this guy blind? Is it because of his sins or the sins of his parents? And Jesus says it's neither. It's to glorify God. Suffering also makes us stronger. Look at Navy SEALs. They train to the point of death. They leave it all out. They suffer so they can be prepared for battle. And also this suffering together creates a bond that each man is willing to risk his own life for the man next to him. You know, I used to coach basketball when I was younger, and one year we had a really good team. We started 8-0, we were feeling ourselves, and it got out of hand. The next game we lost. We lost to a much lesser, it was a team that we probably should have beat by at least 20 points. But we got comfortable. 
So that next practice, I made those kids run 40 suicides. I don't know if any of you know what a suicide is. So basically, you're at one end of the court. You run to the free throw line back, half court back, other free throw line back, full court back. You had to sprint every single one of them, and they ran it for 40 times. They hated me, and I know they hated me for it. But I also knew that it was necessary to bring our team together. And we ended up winning the championship that year. Because when we get comfortable, we get lazy, we get sloppy. And suffering makes us stronger. See, Our Lady would not be Our Lady without her suffering at the foot of the cross. She didn't suffer because she sinned. She's immaculate. There is no sin within her. She didn't suffer, or also her suffering made her stronger. Now she knows what it's like for a mother to lose a son. You know, she knows what pain is. So now she can intercede for us better. And I'm not saying that suffering is not real or that suffering doesn't hurt. I know there are some of us here that have really had a terrible past. Some really bad things have happened to us. We have suffered in life. Some of us in here might be suffering right now, but it's not without a meaning. And God can take something ugly and make it beautiful. God can take something ugly and make it beautiful. Our suffering is not without vain. St. Paul writes, I consider that the suffering of this present times are as nothing compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Bear your sufferings well, my brothers and sisters. Carry your cross daily and have hope that Jesus has prepared a place for us where suffering will no longer be a thing. Amen?